All right, AAP class, welcome to our first async assignment. Uh, Matt here. I'm going to walk us through this new assignment using abstraction to nest triangles. We're going to build a recursive triangle program uh, using recursion. We're going to talk about that today. Last assignment, we made these designs, these fractal designs using triangles. Uh, we nested different triangle programs within each other to kind of build that out and make it look like this. Today we're going to use rec recursion and simplify this code process. And uh, go ahead and we're going to we're going to create this design, but we're going to use recursion and it'll be less code. So go ahead and click on this lab page here. It'll bring you to this page and it says uh, open up your fractal art project. You could also um, start this from scratch. It's okay. Create a block called nested triangle that takes one input size, looks like this, and for now only draws one triangle, but only if size is greater than nine. So how do we do that? We want to build a triangle. So we're going to move, we're going to turn, we might have a pen down. Since we're uh, drawing, I always like to make this little, when space key is pressed, we want to go to 0, 0, 0.90 degrees and clear. It's just an easy way to press the space key and clear the screen. So that little algorithm is here. Pen down, move 10 steps, turn 15 degrees, and it's a triangle. So we're going to loop that for the number of sides that a triangle has. So three times. Repeat three. And so your algorithm looks like this for a triangle. And now let's go back to the lab. They want us to make this purple nested triangle size with a size input variable, only if size is greater than nine. So we're gonna need an if for sure. We're gonna need a greater than if size is greater than nine, then we'll draw our triangle and we wanna make a block. It's in the purple menu, it's a command, and our lab said make it nested triangle size size. So I'm just going to write nested triangle size, hit OK, add my input variable size, OK, and I'm going to make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. Place this in here. If size is greater than 9, put the pen down, repeat three times, move size steps. And for a triangle, we want this to be 120 degrees, but the size has to be greater than nine. Hit apply. Let me place this over here. I'll make my screen bigger and we can test this out. Go into the looks menu. I'll bring this block out and let's try size 100. And I run it and it makes a triangle of size 100. If I do size 50, it makes a triangle of size 50. You can clear that if size is greater than nine. So let's test if that actually works. Can I make a triangle size five? Nope, nothing happens. So this is working. So we just did number one and number two. Let's move on to number three. Try your block giving at least inputs nine, 18, 20, and 100. Make sure it works. We did 100. We went under nine. Nine, it's got to be greater than nine. So nine doesn't work. 18 works. 20 works. 100 works. Yes, we did it. All right, so now we can move on. So far, this is just a triangle procedure, but next we'll make it recursive. And what does that mean? Calling a procedure from inside itself is called recursion. And we'll take a look at what that means in code in just a second on this next one. From the palette, drag nested triangle into the definition of nested triangle between the move and turn blocks. So this is basically what recursion is, replacing a block inside of itself to be part of its own definition. And that we call that recursive because it calls upon itself to define itself. And what does that look like? Place it between the move and turn blocks. Well, here's my move and turn. So we want to take a nested triangle and place it in between the move and turn block, just like that. Now, we want to make its size input half the current value of size. So they give you an example here, size divided by two. So I go to operators, I take a division block, size, drag it down, size divided by two. 
All right, now what does this do? Again, try out your block with at least inputs 9, 18, 20, and 100. Make sure it works as you would expect. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to clear my screen. And now let's try triangle size 100. Now it's doing something very different. So it's basically drawing the first leg of the 100 triangle, and that gets it down to here. Then it runs nested triangle size divided by 2. So it draws what's half of 100? It's 50. It draws a 50 triangle, but it only starts it because then it gets here and does it again, size divided by 2. So then half of 50 is 25. It makes a 25 triangle. And then it does it again, size divided by 2. So 25 divided by 2 is 12.5. It makes a 12.5 triangle. Now, why doesn't it keep going and make a make a 6.25 triangle right here and half it again? Because it only does it if size is greater than 9. That's why we put this here, to make it stop at some point. Otherwise, it would go on forever and ever, just halving and halving and halving and halving. So I'm going to clear that. Let's try it again. What if I do size uh, 200? Let's see what happens. Makes a giant 200 triangle then a 100, then a 50, a 25, a 12, and it makes that at every point of the large triangle. So it increases the complexity of the recursion. I can't even see it because it's going off the screen. So if I clear that, let's try something like 40. It does a 40, a 20, a 10, and then it stops. So now we have this recursive triangle block that has itself inside of its own definition, and that's recursion. So if you've got this working at this point, you can save this and turn it in. You might as well call it a, a recursive nested triangle. That's a good way to define this one. And you can turn that in on Classroom for your credit today.